The Wastefulness Found in Life, Part 2. This is from Ecclesiastes, Chapter 6, Verses 7 through 12. A person's life is summed up by what they have accomplished in that life. To many people, all that is a life is to work for what they consume and still they are not satisfied. We dream about what we want to be or what we want from life. And most of the time, those dreams never materialize. Solomon points out the futility or the waste of a person's life is found in dreaming, working only for what you consume seeing literally, literally no difference between the wise and the foolish, not knowing the future, understanding that God controls all things and that our present and future are things, are things we really do not know. When we look in our life, what do we see? A person's life is not wasteful because we dream of things or work just to satisfy our hunger. It becomes a waste when we only focus on the non-essentials of life. Just look at verse 9. What the eye see is better than what the soul desires. This means that we need to enjoy what we can see, or rather what we have. The notion of what the soul desires means that we are wasting too much time dreaming, too much time wanting, and too much time wishing for what we do not have. It is in our nature to always want more or be more than who we are. The reality is that we do not dream and wish for things we have no control over. Verse 10 says, Whatever exists has already, already been named, and it is known what man is. For he cannot dispute with him who is stronger than he is. The entire universe was created by God and named by him. We are created by him. And so he knows his creation. He knows man. God knows. He directs. He makes happen everything in this universe, in this world. And he has complete control over all, over all things, small or great, which include every aspect of our lives. Who are we to argue or contend with our Creator? The unbelievers and lost sinners may raise their fists and voices against God. They can try to remove all aspects of him from society. But all of that, all of their efforts is futile. God knows man. And he knows what our futures will be because he knew us even before we were born. Verse 12 sums up the theme of how we need to be. How we need to be living. Solomon tells us about the future. Who controls the future? Do we, man, control our own future? Or does God? 
The correct answer is that God knows and he controls our future. This is that profound truth that we as finite human beings cannot predict what the future has for us. God knows everything that was, that is, and what will be. No human being knows the future. If someone tells you they can read the stars or the palm of your hand and say this and that about your future, they are liars. And the point that Solomon is trying to get across to us is that we should not worry about our future. All of that is in God's hands. There is no way we can plan out our destiny. So why waste our time doing it? Today's life issues have their own challenges by themselves. We do not need to add to them. What challenges lie ahead in the future? As a believer in Jesus Christ, we have placed our lives in the very hands of God. And since he has control of our life, why not let him control it, guide it, and plan out our future as he sees fit? The true wastefulness and futility found in the life of any man is worrying about the things we have no control over. And that is our destiny, our future, what lies, what lies ahead of us or for us. We need to trust in God all aspects of our life. That is all we as believers need to do. That is the tendency of man to be apprehensive of what lies ahead of us. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, next week, next year. We do not know what will be our life next week. But God knows. He knows every second, every minute, every hour of our life. And so for the believer in Christ, all that we need to do is trust in God for all things. For the sinner, the lost person that rejects him, that rebels against him, that turns against him. We pray that ye will be touched by God and that God will touch you when you reach for him, when you turn to, you, to him and turn away from your, from your life you're living now. God has freely given us a gift and that gift is his son. And through his son, we can find forgiveness of our sins. But the choice is ours to make. We need to choose to turn from the life of sin and wickedness and turn to the new life found in Christ, found in forgiveness, found in the grace that God has given all men. All of, our, all of us are tainted by sin. All of us have that sinful nature and character. But God is freely offered us a way to him. And that is through his son, Jesus Christ, at the cross. His blood covers sin, but we need to receive him as our Lord and our Savior. To be covered from that sin. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.